What's up guys? So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you one of our most popular transitions and I'm going to call it the pull off. I utilize it in almost every single one of our videos. It's such a good transition when done right and there's so many different creative ways to use it, but it all comes from this one technique. So we're going to dive into After Effects. I'm going to show you how it's done. So the first thing you need to do is shoot a clip where you pull off some kind of flat object that has some good tracking information for After Effects. Now if you have reflective surfaces like this example, then you need to put something over it that doesn't reflect at all so Mocha can track it easily. Alright, so to begin, I have imported both of the clips I need, the postcard shot and the shot that's going into the postcard. So I'm going to right click the postcard shot and do new comp from selection. Now I want to trim this up, so I'm going to find that first frame that I want to be the very beginning, hit B on the keyboard to set an endpoint, and then find the ending, hit N on the keyboard to set an out point. Now to trim the comp to the work area, hit Shift Command X or Shift Control X if you're on PC. Now what we need to do is go to that first frame, go to Effects and Presets, and search for Mocha. Double click it. Now in Effect Controls, we're going to launch Mocha and it is going to open up. Now I put a sticky note on the card with an X in it, assuming I would use the X as the tracker markers, but the sticky note contrasts so well with the purple that I'm gonna use its corners as the tracker points. So go up here to the pen with the X tool, and we're going to click one of the corners, click another corner, and do all four as precisely as possible. And once you click the fourth one, you're gonna see that it hasn't finished. All you have to do is right click and it is going to finish that object. Now go over here to track motion options and have everything selected. And being on the first frame, you're going to track forward. Now Mocha is going to track those four points. And right now it looks like it did a wonderful job. And now that the tracking is finished, I'm going to go over here to save and we're going to exit out. Since it's built into After Effects, we can just go ahead and hit the X. Now you can see nothing has happened yet. That's because we got to apply that tracking information onto a null object. So we're going to right click down here, new null object. Now go back to this layer and we're going to go over here to tracking data. Now we're going to click create track data and you want to make sure that this gear right here is on and click the layer one, hit OK. And this is very important right here under export option you want to change it from corner pin to transform. Layer export two, you want to select null one and make sure that this is set to source. Now hit apply export. What's going to happen is it just put all that tracking information onto the null objects. So now it's time to make the magic happen. But first we need to go up here to composition, composition settings. We need to make our timeline a little longer. I'm going to add 10 seconds, hit OK. Click on the timeline, hit the minus key to zoom out, and I'm going to click both of these layers holding shift, and I'm just going to shift it on over. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm punny. I'm puntastic. <laughs> Go back to project, I make myself laugh. Go over here to the Tahiti, double click, and I've already set the in and out points, but you can use these buttons right here to set your in and out points. Now I'm going to drag the Tahiti clip in. And what I want to do, oh, the first thing you're going to notice is it's super zoomed in. And if I use my mouse, I can zoom out. And that is because the resolution of the Tahiti clip is much higher than the resolution of the composition. Easy solution, click one of these corner squares, and while holding shift, it is going to scale down. And I will let go of it right there. Now we want to find the last point where we want it to be pulled off. So I'm going to say about right here. Let me use the plus key to zoom in. Hit Shift Command D or Shift Control D if you're on PC. Delete this part. Now click here, right click, time, and freeze on last frame. So what's happened is it's going to play the clip until it reaches this keyframe and then it's going to freeze frame. So now we need to bring these two clips, click both of these layers, shift them on over, and a little trick, you can hold Shift while you're shifting them over and it's going to snap to this keyframe. And now you can see nothing has still happened. That is because we haven't uh, parented it. So hit minus on the keyboard. First, before I do that, I'm just gonna go to the end here. I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna set the out point of the timeline, hit in. And then I'm just gonna trim comp to work area, shift command X. 
Now what we need to do is go all the way to this point, make sure that your playhead is at the keyframe, and we are going to parent this to the null. So click this little swirly icon, parent it to the null, and watch what has happened. Ta-da! <laughs> But you're probably wondering, Amir, that doesn't look right. You're right, it doesn't look right. We have to apply just a couple more things. So the first is we need to hit S with this layer selected, hit S. It's gonna bring up your scale, hit a keyframe. And now we're gonna go a couple frames forward till the postcard's completely in. And we're gonna scale it up. And you just wanna make sure that it goes beyond the postcard. And it's K if it completely covers. I'm gonna show you what we're about to do. And now if we play it through, I need to mute this real quick. I don't want any audio. Now it just looks like a big frame that I'm holding. So what we need to do is create a mask. Go up here to the rectangle tool. If you don't see the rectangle tool, click and hold. Maybe you see the ellipse or polygon tool and then select rectangle tool. Now with this layer selected, you are going to double click the rectangle tool and that is going to create a mask. And to make it appear, click on the layer and hit M. M will bring up your mask. Now we're going all on this keyframe. We're going to select a keyframe on mask path, mask expansion and mask feather. Now what we wanna do is go to the point where it's completely in the frame and we want to grab each of these corners and bring it to, let me zoom in, bring it to the edge of that purple postcard. Now you wanna take your time and do this as clean as possible. If you've probably noticed in our videos, it looks like we spent a lot of time doing it. It's the little things that make the big difference. So now I've just set A and B keyframes. I need to do a bunch more because if you see, we still have these, this like area right here we need to work on. But what I'm gonna do is go to this keyframe and hit mask expansion. And I'm just gonna bring it down, let's say negative, I don't know, negative 21. And then mask feather, just to soften it just a little bit to 20. So now if we go from here to here, you'll see that it looks good, but what's happening is we don't have that purple border but right here we have the purple border. So we need to go within these frames and just adjust the mask accordingly. So I'll start here, I'll grab this corner and move it. And you want it to have enough border that looks like what it looks like later on. Now just go a couple frames later. Remember the way keyframes work is from the first keyframe to the second, it is going to adjust accordingly. So we don't have to go frame by frame unless it doesn't look good. Now we'll go two more frames. I'll speed up this process just so you guys don't have to wait around. Now that I've adjusted the mask, let's see what we got. Perfect. We have a perfect pull off. Now to make this sell just a little bit more, we're gonna add a little effect called cartoon. So go over here to effects and presets, search for cartoon, click and drag it onto this layer. Now go to that first keyframe, set the opacity over here to zero, click the keyframe. And once it completely pulls off right there, I'm gonna set it to 100. Now with cartoon, you can totally mess with these to stylize it how you want it to look. But the whole point is, I want it to look like it's playing a normal clip, but as I pull it off, it's a drawing or a painting. So this gives it that stencil feel as if it's a piece of art. So I'm gonna render it now. All right, so with that rendered, here's our final product. So there you have it, that is how you do the pull off transition. And once you understand this basic fundamental, you'll be able to utilize this in so many creative ways. You've probably seen in some of our videos, we've done some crazy things with the pull off transition. So make sure you check out Zachary Video Academy because every single transition, no matter how complex it is that we've done, 
we go over it in Zachary Video Academy. So head over there now, click the link down below to get seven free videos to check it out. We are teaching everything you need to know to take your videos to the next level. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Shoo!